I've had God to say a few things to me recently, and you appreciate how he'll just give you a, a snapshot of something, you know. And uh, he said this to me not long ago. He said, the turnaround is right around the corner. I go, yes, amen. Amen. You say, well, that's nice that he said it to you. Well, it, it'll work for anyone who has faith to grab it. Amen. Need highs. Hallelujah. So take it. The turnaround is right around the corner. You know what happens when somebody's right around the corner and so are you? You bump into each other. Isn't that right? Especially if you're going full speed ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he said this to me. I was flying back from a meeting and on the airplane. He said this. You're standing on the threshold of destiny. I believe that is us in this era too. Amen. How many men of God have spoken about the time that we're looking at right now? Yeah. Amen. And... Uh, we don't want it to pass to somebody else. We want to do our part. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, before, well, just a few moments ago, that I could sense that anointing in my hand. And I, you know, you, you have to learn through experience what God wants to do with that. But yesterday afternoon, just for maybe five, ten seconds, that healing and that anointing flashed in my hand. I've noticed when it does that after a morning service or in the afternoon before an evening service, and it does it at that time, that it's basically, it, it, it acts as a word of knowledge for me that God wants to heal in that service. So I, you have to learn to kind of pay attention and connect the dots of every time you sense something. Yeah. But then when I was over there and I sensed it again, I go, what's that for? And I've noticed for me, I'm not saying for anybody else, but for me, because the word doesn't spell these things out always. And you have to learn how the spirit flows through you. But for me, I've recognized that that anointing tangibly comes in my hand at three different times, either for healing or if there is a, uh, a prayer burden that anointing will come to help with that, and I'll sense it in my hand. Or if there's an angel present, I'll sense it. And so when I was sensing it over there, I said, Father, what do I, what is that for? And he said, the messenger angel that works with you is here to work with a message. And you'll remember Dad Hagen talked about that there were two angels that worked with him. Number, the first was his guardian angel that every single one of us have from birth. Yeah. Saved or unsaved, there's an angel with you. Yes. Uh, and second of all, he said that there's a messenger angel and that angel will bring him instruction from God. He doesn't take the place of the Holy Spirit, but there are times that the angels will have a message. Yeah. And we find that scripturally through the word. Yeah. Yeah. You can find it. Uh, that that's true. No, uh, like I said, an angel doesn't take the place of the Holy Ghost, but they are part of what God uh, sends to us in our, to, to assist and help us. That they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. And part of their ministry to us and for us is they will bring something from heaven that we need for the moment. Amen. Amen. That's right. And uh, then Dad Hagen, in talking about the messenger angel, said he will not only bring a message to me, but he, when I deliver that message, he goes with it right. Amen. Amen. Yes. to help drive it into the hearts yes. of the people, right. help, yes. help it yeah. land in them. Amen. Amen. 
And then I'm reminded of something a pastor Jay said, and you might need to help me with this to, to make sure I, I, I state it accurately. But he said years ago, remember you had a vision and you saw angels. I don't know how many you saw carrying, it looked like some kind of container and they were going through the earth. And in this container were, was the oracles of God. And the angels would stop with someone and whoever would receive it, who would receive that oracle, then the angels would work with that message and that person getting that message. And then the angels, when that person would quit working with the message, the angels would pick that up and take it to someone else who would honor it. Now that's real important. It's not about us repeating someone's sermon. It's about us not letting go of someone's message that God gave to the earth. And Dad Hagen, and I can't go all the way back by generations, but I can go back to who God's put in our lives. And Dad Hagen brought messages by the Spirit to the earth. And it is our job to not be uh, uh, dismissive toward those messages just because men leave messages don't. And it's not about necessarily repeating their sermons. It's about repeating their message. Amen. And it's fine to repeat the sermon, but I'm saying it's about the message. Amen. And to have a ministry that God will promote, you have to promote the message. If you're going to promote your ministry, he's not promoting your ministry. He's promoting his message. And as long as we stay with what he's promoting, then we'll, we'll move into that promotion. It's about the message. I said, it's about the message. So when Dad Hagen went home to be with the Lord, I made a list of what were the messages that God gave him. And I, I, keep, I keep to those. And at different times as I'm led by the Spirit, I will preach in line with those because it's not about me getting something of my own. It's about me knowing the message Amen. that God wants to bring. But then there are messages that belong to an era. I understand that. And sometimes uh, it's might, it might be something we haven't heard in that manner before, but it's certainly in line with the word and it's something that God is emphasizing in an era. And I would say to you that that book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing, contains part of that. You would do well to make sure you have that book and read it. You say, well, you're just saying it because you wrote it. I am saying it because I wrote it. It's good. Why do I want to spend money to print something that's bad? But more than that, it's what Jesus said. And so we need to pay attention. What is God saying and what is he emphasizing? I was talking about this at our prayer conference. For those of you who were here, you heard this, but it goes in line with this is uh, when brother Norval Hayes went home to be with the Lord in the fall of last year. Uh, in, in recent months, I kept being prompted toward uh, watching some of his messages that are still online. And I couldn't get away from them, not that I was trying to, but God was emphasizing it with me. Yeah. <clears throat> and Brother Norval was a wonderful teacher on the message of faith and healing. He ministered alongside Dad Hagen for years. But he taught faith and healing through the place of worship and the flow of worship. And so in reading in one of his books, he talked about how God spoke to him and said that, his, that God's people are not receiving all God has for them because they, they haven't learned to worship God enough. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and that, that isn't my message tonight, but that's a clip of what was said. And so when I was getting ready to preach at the, at the, the Keys Church in Fireball, California, uh, I was getting ready for the service that night and I was planning on the spirit of God had led me to preach on this message that was given by the spirit to brother Norval on the subject of worship. And, uh, as I was getting ready for the service that night, I looked and there was an angel that was standing in my hotel room. You say, did you see him? No, I, I did not see him. I knew by word of knowledge. I knew where he was standing. I could... I knew exactly what he said. 
Now, my husband had the discerning of spirits to where he could, he would, he would see them and describe them. He'd tell what they look like, their size and uh, what their apparel look like. But me, it operates more by word of knowledge. And so, um, the angel said to me, he said, I have come to impart the, uh, let me, let me get it right to, to impart the utterance for the revelation given through brother Norval. So notice this, that angel was looking for somebody to pick up the message. He was looking for someone to pick up the message. And I'm not saying I'm the only one. Uh, certainly others could. But I'm saying God doesn't want messages lost. Amen. Amen. That's right. He doesn't want them lost because we need to build on them for where he's taking us. Amen. 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 It's no mistake. Uh, tonight I want to talk about the spirit of seeing and knowing. And it's no mistake that the last revival that we have experienced in the body of Christ is the word of faith. Because uh, you need faith to flow with the spirit of seeing and knowing. You need faith to flow with the Holy Ghost. You need faith to cooperate and yield to the nine manifestations or gifts of the spirit. So it's not a coincidence that God preceded the era we're in with an emphasis on faith. We need to pay attention to the larger picture of how God has moved. If we go back and we look at Martin Luther, because I'm certainly not going to touch on all revivals, but if we look at Martin Luther, I mean, the light to the body of Christ had been lost of even how to be born again. They had receded and stepped back and drifted so far away from the message. If they would not have let the message drop, that light would not have been lost, right. but it was dropped. The message was dropped and Martin Luther, as he is uh, doing his penance of climbing uh, up, up, up uh, the, the, the church steps outside with glass on the steps and he's grinding his knees into it, climbing up the steps with his knees doing penance for his sin. The word of the Lord comes to him and says, Martin, the just shall live by faith. And that was the message that had been lost, that should not have been lost, didn't have to be lost, but people don't pay attention because they want something new and different. They think because the man who delivered it is no longer here, it has lost pertinence. That's because that's carnality, taking the place of spirituality. And just hearing it doesn't mean you got it. Because when you get it, you don't let it go. And so after Martin Luther heard from God, and of course there was that revival that spread, then John Wesley, God used him and the message with through him, the primary emphasis was without holiness, no man will see the Lord. In other words, it's not enough to say I'm born again. It better show up. Amen. Amen. It needs to show up Amen. without holiness. No man will see the Lord. Amen. And then, of course, we go to later times and you arrive at the Azusa Street Revival when the message had been lost about being filled with the Holy Ghost and that, had, that light had to come again. Amen. And the Azusa Street Revival was simply the light on the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if there's the infilling of the Holy Ghost, it's evidence with the speaking in tongues. Amen. And then healing that had been lost, the message of healing through the healing revival was brought back. Amen. And then the emphasis on faith through the word of faith has been brought back. But the emphasis for the last day era is the gifts of the Spirit. See, it's the gifts of the Spirit. It is a revival of the gifts. We know this, that um, my husband as well as other ministers prophesied and said that this last day revival would be all previous revivals wrapped up into one. 
also said that all fivefold gift ministries would be in operating at full potential power. Amen. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, operating at full potential power. Amen. Then the nine manifestations or gifts of the Spirit operating at full potential power. Amen. This last day revival is a revival of the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. To flow with the gifts of the Spirit, you got to have faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And I don't mean to sound harsh, but I'm just saying if people aren't flowing with the gifts of the Spirit, it's a faith issue. Because we need the manifestations of the Spirit. We need the Spirit to manifest Himself. Otherwise, we're left to the flesh. We're left to men's methods, men's gimmicks and schemes, and that won't do to reap a worldwide harvest. God is not going to use men's schemes to reap the Father's harvest. Our Father, He has a harvest due Him. And we need to be jealous for His harvest. And it's divine tools and divine equipment of the nine manifestations of the Spirit that are going to help reap this harvest. Amen. Amen. Praise Good. the Lord. Praise so we were reading last night, go with me if you would again to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to start reading in verse 7. And we talked a little bit last night about one particular word in this verse. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So we see this, that the Spirit will manifest Himself. And when He does, it's something that's given. Meaning it's not in our control. He gives it. You have no control over when somebody gives you something. Right. It's under his control. It's That's given. Right. It is not controlled. Right. It is given. Right. And when somebody implies that in any service at any time they can step into one of these nine manifestations of the Spirit, it's not the manifestation of this Spirit. Because he's in control of them and they're given as he wills. They're not controlled by men. Amen. Amen. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And we talked about last night that when the Spirit is in manifestation, people are going to profit from that. If we cooperate with that manifestation, there will be profit, not loss. And every man who cooperates will profit. And every man who does not cooperate won't profit. But he manifests because we need the profit his manifestation brings. There's increase. If someone's profiting, they have something they didn't have before. If a company is profiting, they have income they didn't have before. They have resources they didn't have before. When we receive the manifestation of the Spirit, we're going to end up with something we didn't have before. And then it goes on in the next verses to list the ways the Spirit manifests Himself. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. That is not saving faith, that is special faith. That's not the common, ordinary faith that is in every believer's heart. It's a special faith that comes. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. These are the way the Spirit manifests Himself, and these are the ways when He wants to manifest, this is what it's going to look like. These things have not passed away. <laughs> Just because they're not always evident somewhere doesn't mean that they're, they're not still the way the Holy Spirit manifests. Amen. These are the ways he's going to manifest himself. 
and they will manifest where they're honored. They will manifest where they're given place to. We do not control when they manifest, but we can certainly make sure that the scene is set, the stage is set, that if he wants to, that we are in position to cooperate with him in any manifestation he chooses. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31 says this, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Notice these words, covet earnestly. That means a half-hearted approach will not bring a manifestation or create an atmosphere for a manifestation to take place. A nonchalant, careless, not really caring, if it happens or not. He said to covet earnestly. That's our part. We cannot, we cannot control them, but we can certainly covet them. And not coveting that they just flow through us particularly, but that they are manifest for the benefit of the people. We covet these things, why? So people can profit. Not so we can look like we're powerful. We, we have power with God. But we're not desiring that those show up so we can get attention from them. We want them to, we covet them earnestly because lives need the profit that happens when the Spirit is in manifestation. So we know this when he says covet earnestly the best gifts. The Spirit won't manifest Himself when there's no hunger. That'd be hungry. Dad Hagen sat in the back room with us when he was here in 2003. And he said, the gifts of the Spirit don't go into manifestation because you prayed. They go into manifestation because we're hungry for them. And that's in line with 1 Corinthians 12, 31. Amen. 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 You have to teach people to be hungry. You have to teach them to be hungry for the manifestation of the Spirit. Not just so, now listen, you don't want to teach people to be hungry for it just so they can get theirs, but so anyone in need can get theirs. Because if you're not careful, people can come to a service with, I want a word, I want a word, I want somebody to call me out. That may happen, but God does not want a singular in our approach to it. It's so anybody in need can get what they need that if they don't know how to receive from God on their own, there is this wonderful way the Spirit will manifest for them. Because people are at all different levels of spiritual growth and development. And so we're hungry for everyone to leave the place with the, the, the place we're in with the answer they need and the help they need and the profit that they need. So number one, to have these, to create a place where the Spirit will give these manifestations is number one, we have to hunger for them, for the people, for everyone, not just for ourselves, but for everyone, whoever needs them. The second thing is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, before he even listed these nine manifestations of the Spirit, Paul said, now concerning spiritual gifts or concerning things that pertain to the Spirit, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ignorance will shut down the Spirit's ability to manifest among us. It's not that he can't do it, but we won't receive it. Yeah. Ignorance is, can't receive from God. Yeah. That's right. It's knowledge that receives from God. Yeah. So to have a greater demonstration and give, create an atmosphere and a place and a platform for the Spirit to manifest, we need to be taught yeah. how he manifests, what these look like, so that when he wants to manifest, people don't reject it, but they receive it. Because if they reject it, he's grieved. 
Amen. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Meaning this, ignorance will deprive us of profit of the manifestations of the Spirit. So, number one, we have to hunger for them. Number two, we have to teach it. We have to study it. We have to learn it. We have to be students of the manifestations of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Why? So we can be skillful in receiving them, moving with the Holy Spirit, or being a vessel he ministers those through. Now you've heard me tell about when my husband was in a meeting and Jesus stepped out of a cloud on the platform and fire shot out of his eyes at my husband and said, you're not being skillful with the healing anointing. And he stepped back into the cloud. Specifically, Jesus was displeased because he wasn't being skillful with the healing anointing. But generally, what displeased him was lack of skill. Lack of skill with, regarding my husband, lack of skill with the healing anointing at that time in his life displeased Jesus. But notice this, lack of skill displeases him. For any of us. That's right, yeah. Amen. To not care enough or be interested enough or hungry enough to become skillful is the problem. Every one of us becomes skillful at what we're interested in. We must have the hunger to gain the skill. I love something I heard Brother Copeland said. It was, he said, I was, as a kid, you know, he wasn't saved. And he said, as a kid, he said, I was the dumbest kid in the class. And Sister Glory, so precious, walked up and said, you weren't the dumbest kid in the class. You were the least interested <laughs> kid in the class. That's good. That's good. That's right. <laughs> you weren't interested. He, basically, he wasn't interested in what was going on, so he wasn't listening. He wasn't being a student of it. It's not, if we're ignorant, it shows our lack of interest. And that grieves the spirit if we're not interested in how he manifests because then we're more interested in us getting our, 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 our own flesh to manifest or our own opinion or our own sermons in manifestation apart from his manifestations. Listen, we can manifest a sermon, but everybody might not profit. <laughs> But when the Spirit manifests, every man will profit. <laughs> That's what it says. And every man profit. So to minister out of the flesh, you're not assured of anybody having something more than they had when they came in. But when the Spirit gets to have His way, everyone, every man can walk out of that place with something they didn't have before they came in. Even if you're not the one ministered to. You got to see, and you got to see Him manifest in some way, whether it was through prophecy or whether it was somebody else getting ministered to through prophecy, tongues, interpretation, or somebody else getting a word of knowledge, you got to see the divine teacher in demonstration manifesting himself, and that is you walked out with something you didn't have before. Just to see him on display and in manifestation. Because the only way you learn these things is by experience. you got to be around it. Amen. Let me just say this. For ministers who have not had any history of moving and seeing the manifestations of the Spirit in their ministry, get around those who have it. Amen. You have to get around those who know it. You have to be tutored in these things. You have to see the example as Pastor Debbie was talking about this morning about having an example to follow. If they've never done it, you can't get an example from them. You have to get around those who are learning and developing in the move of the Spirit so you can even see what it looks like. Because a self-taught pupil in these things is dangerous. It's risky. 
But in Dad Hagen, we had an example. We had someone who gave us uh, what it looked like and what it looked like skillfully. Amen. 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 So we see this, the lack of hunger will grieve the spirit from manifesting this way. The lack of interest, which parents ignorance. Amen. Being ignorant about these things yes. will grieve the spirit in where he won't be able to manifest the way he wants to. Yes. Then we also have this, not having our minds renewed uh-huh. about it. Amen. Anytime we're going to flow with God on something, we have to renew our minds. Yeah. Yeah. As I said last night, we have to renew our mind that when the spirit gets to manifest, there's going to be profit. That means that we don't step back from allowing that to happen in our midst. Because sometimes we'll get fearful about, you know, seeing or knowing or ministering to somebody. But then what we're doing is we've decided that someone else is not permitted to profit because we're afraid. Then also, this goes hand in hand with having knowledge. But another thing, we have to sow it into the people so that we'll reap it of the spirit. Because as we read last night, of course, you only reap what you sow. To have the move of the spirit, you have to teach the move of the spirit. To have the manifestation of the spirit, you have to teach it because if you don't sow it, we won't reap it. So if this being, and I believe it is, and it's in keeping with what men of God have said about this last day era. This is going to be a revival of the nine manifestations of the spirit. We need to be teaching it. Teach it. Why? So that we can reap it. Amen. Amen. But then also another thing that has to be in place is faith for it. Amen. Faith for it. Faith for it. Faith to move with it. Pastor Dennis was, during the offering, was saying that he didn't have faith to give. Why? Because his mind would talk him out of it. What's faith? To move with the Spirit in the manifestations of the Spirit when your mind won't talk you out of it. Because, listen, there have been so many times I've been up and something comes to me and I go, hmm, Maybe that needs to wait. Or maybe that, and I just go, forget it. Just say it. (laughs) Overthinking dismisses the manifestations of the spirit. Because overthinking is not the faith arena. The mind is not the faith arena. When you leave the faith arena, you're done moving with the spirit. (laughs) So when you get in the mental arena, know this, you just stepped out of the flow of the spirit. And for those of you who have ever operated in a vocal gift, like uh, interpretation of tongues or prophecy, (laughs) if your mind kicks in halfway through, you're done halfway through. (laughs) And and all the prophets stopped. Right then when your mind kicked in, nobody profited. No matter what words came out of your mouth after that. I learned this. I remember the very first time Ed and I operated with tongues and interpretation. And we were up in Canada. And the pastor's grand, excuse me, son-in-law came out from the side room at the start of the service. And when he did, a word came to me for him. And uh, I didn't really operate that much in giving people's words. Plus, Ed was preaching that night. So I just sat on it. I didn't say anything. And Ed preached. And then Ed got up. At the end of preaching, and he pulled out the son-in-law and spoke in tongues and then handed me the mic. (laughs) And I go, what am I? Oh, oh, no, no, I I do do have something. So (laughs) only God is great enough to interpret what hadn't yet been said. I already had the interpretation before he spoke in tongues. Only God can give you... The, trans, the interpretation of what hasn't even been spoken yet. God was kind to me that day. I had it, re- I had it through the whole service. That felt real good on my mind, my flesh, everything. 
<laughs> but it, it didn't really happen that much that way again after that. God was, you know, being gracious and letting you think that this is just this easy, you know. <laughs> But then there were times that Ed would get up and start speaking in tongues and then hand me the mic and I'm going. <laughs> Ain't got nothing. You missed it. <laughs> because God didn't give that when the service started. I didn't have the interpretation, you know, when the service started. And then Ed would just hand me the mic and I, and I would say, I haven't got nothing. He says, yes, you do. Yeah. I just learned, quit arguing with him. Just get up and take it because it's just going to be so embarrassing to do the argument thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I would take it and then, uh, you know, one or two words would come and so I'd give it. And then it's like, next time you do that part, I'll do the other part. <laughs> But I quickly learned that the best way to accurately and skillfully flow with interpretation of tongues is the minute he starts speaking in tongues, just get your tongue going. Just get it going. <laughs> just, what I mean is get ready. Just get ready. Just, even if you don't know what to say, you're going to say something. <laughs> So just like, don't even argue, just get up and just act like you got something. <laughs> so I would just, he would do the tongue and I just grab the mic and start saying, and the Lord said, <laughs> and you go, what did he want? I had no idea before I said that what was going to say, but once I opened my mouth, then it would come out. Now let me tell you, that takes faith. <laughs> Because one time I sat and waited. He spoke in tongues and I sat and waited for something to pop up to the mind. Just like speaking in tongues bypasses your mind, interpretation can bypass your mind. Prophecy can bypass you. You know what I'm saying by that. It doesn't come and originate here. So to look in your mind for these utterances, you're not going to find it. All you're going to find is your mind. And there's no profit for anybody else in your mind. I mean, you're not even profiting from your mind half the time. So he would hand me the mic and I learned if you pause all that is, is an open door for the mind to say, here I am. And you don't know nothing and you got nothing. And <laughs> so I learned, I have to start talking before the mind kicks in. That's called faith. And if you're not willing to do that, you, you have to be bypassed in these manifestations. Amen. Amen. I just learned the quicker I can start talking, the, the quicker I'm going to get connected to my spirit instead of my mind. Very good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It takes faith is what I'm. <clears throat> it was comical. I'll tell you this because it always did the tongue. And I've all, I, I had wondered what would it be like just to do the tongue? <laughs> Because if you mess it, ain't nobody know it because you don't even know it. <laughs> so one time we were at Brother Norville's church and Ed had preached and then he ministered by tongues and interpretation. And sometimes the, the interpretation, depending on the degree of the anointing, would come stronger. And other times it was like, man, you had to dip down and draw out because it, the, the anointing just was different, you know? And so, uh, it, anyway, <laughs> I was doing the interpretation. Then I had, to, I had to fly back home and Ed was going to stay for one more service. And so I, when I talked to him the next day, I said, how'd your service go last night? Because I'd already left. And he said, well, he said it was fine. He said, I preached, and he said, then operated in tongues and interpretation. I said, with who? <laughs> he 
said, Brother Norval. And I said, who did the interpreting? <laughs> he said, I did. <laughs> he said, Brother Norval took the microphone and started giving the tongue and just handed it to me. I said, how'd it go? He said, not very good. <laughs> because he had always been in the, uh, absolutely it took faith to give the tongue. Don't misunderstand me because I have seen him pull people out and you have to be pulling the right person out, right? But I've seen him act out things when he's given the tongue. That took faith, but it took faith for me to watch. Why are you doing that? Because I got to come up with an interpretation for that. Why don't you just have him stand real still? I'm talking about the natural mind, you know. I remember one time he took a man and stood him up and, and started speaking in tongues and took him and threw his back against the wall. And just did this and I go, oh, shoot. <laughs> Where is this going to go? <laughs> and he did some other stuff. Thank God. You just stay out of your, stay out of your mind. Shut this, down, shut this, down, shut this down. Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. And you're watching him slam the man against the wall and say, "Don't look, don't look." Shut it down, shut it down. You know, <laughs> because you think I got to formulate something that fits that, and you don't want to formulate it because then there's no profit. Yeah, amen. <laughs> And as soon as I opened up my mouth, thankfully out came, and now that your back is up against the wall, now what are you going to do? Thank God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I'm saying it takes faith to follow the promptings, the leadings, and sometimes they are so slight that it's almost, you know, back there when we do filming, um, at the, there's a clock back there that counts down for the episode length. And there's a person that will stand back there when two minutes is up. When I'm down to two minutes, there's a card that'll flash for two minutes. And if I don't see it, we're down to a minute. Yeah. Oh, and I gotta wrap, you know, wrap it up or wind it down. Or then they show it, I think, again at 30 seconds. But if I miss them flashing that, I miss the flow of what that episode is going to look like. And these, the ways the spirit manifests himself is just a flash. Amen. Amen. And if you miss it, pay it. Yeah, pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. It's like that cue card that comes up. And, and they don't walk up and say to me, Pastor Nancy, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. They just flash it. And it's my responsibility. To flow with the spirit, we have a responsibility to have our spiritual antenna up and pay attention, constantly be looking, paying attention, paying attention, paying attention. Because there are times like last night, I'm preaching in the middle of my service and this precious fellow here, Brother Gus, we're believing with you. Your miracle is working in you. While I'm preaching last night, his, name, his face just comes up before me. Just, I just thought about him. Just sit. And then it goes back down. And then I keep on preaching and then it came back up and I go back down. So what is that? God is expecting me to pay attention to that. And then I almost let that slip. And I remembered at the end, oh wait, he came up in my heart. You just not a pray for this, lay hands on this person. It's just a, ha. Huh. Amen. These are things we have to grow in knowledge about. But it takes faith to be sensitive yes. Amen. because the flesh wants to overlook things it can't control. Amen. The flesh wants to zoom right on past it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, things that are under our control, we like the way that feels to the flesh. But these manifestations are under the spirit's control and we have to honor his control over them. Amen. 
and stop and not try to wrestle the control away from him or dismiss his control over them when he wants to manifest and we have to honor when he says, here's somebody that needs help. Amen. And you think, what if I miss it? Yeah, but what if you don't? And you know what? We miss it. Have you ever believed God for something? I mean, along the way and you had to adjust something in the way you were believing or just what you were thinking or you had to, you, you did not quit believing God just because you didn't receive it the moment you started believing. It's the same thing. You have to understand that we have to grow in skill with this. And the Holy Ghost knows this. He, he, he's not offended if we miss it. He's offended when we're not interested and don't care if we missed it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so when we look at the nine manifestations or the nine gifts of the spirit, they can, they fall into three natural categories. And you may know this, but just for teaching sake, let me restate it. There's three different categories. There's nine manifestations and each one of them will fall into one of three categories. The power gifts, the revelation gifts or the inspirational gifts, vocal gifts. Uh, the power gifts do something. That is the gift, the gifts of healing, working of miracles, the gift of faith. They do something. The revelation gifts reveal something. That's the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge or discerning of spirits. The inspirational or vocal or utterance gifts, they say something. That's tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. So Dad Hagen, and this is, now I said all that to get to this. We've just gotten to the introduction. I got 16 pages. <laughs> we not very far yet. Amen. But Dad Hagen prophesied. He said this, God said to him, now, let me, I want to say prophecy, uh, yes, but God said to him, the utterance gifts, no, 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 I have to back up because, yes, the utterance gifts, no, I'm, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me, let me say what God said to him. Where is what I, God said to him? Wait, okay, now we're back. I flipped what I should not have flipped. God said to Dad Hagen, the spirit of seeing and knowing will be in manifestation in a greater measure than what you have ever seen before. That's what God said. Now notice just because this, God is showing what he wants to do. Just because he wants to do it doesn't mean it'll get done unless we want to move with what he wants to do. So there again, we have to go back to, we have to hunger, covet them. We have to be, gain knowledge, not be ignorant and be skillful with them. We have to, uh, we have to, thank you. We have to renew our minds and we have to have faith for it. Because it won't just happen because he wants it to happen. So when God is speaking and he says the spirit of seeing and knowing will be a manifestation in a greater measure than you've ever seen before. When God is speaking about the spirit of seeing and knowing, he's speaking about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Amen. 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 That's right. The spirit of seeing and knowing is the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge operating. Amen. The word of wisdom is a revealing of future. The word of knowledge is a revealing by the spirit of something of the past or present. And so these things can work together because in the same message, God may tell you something or say something to you that happened in the past, is happening now, and will be happening in the future. So these things work together. But the spirit of seeing and knowing is the operation of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. And God said these will be in greater manifestation. Now think about Dad Hagen when he would be in a healing line. I've heard him say, and many of you no doubt would hear it. He said, you know, we would be in a, in a, in a crusade and he would have a healing line and there would be hundreds 
that would come, especially when he's at the convention center, hundreds of people that would come and line up for him to lay hands on them. And he would say, I could tell you what the physical condition of 90% of them are before I even touch them. And I could tell you the cause of how they got that way. Where the open door. Now, when you're talking about three and four hundred people lined up and he said, I can tell you 90 percent. And he said, but I don't because I don't have time to go down there and tell what I know. Now, you have to understand this. Just because you know it doesn't mean you're to tell it. That's good. Because if he had to tell it or God wanted him to tell it, he would have done that. Remember when the prophets, Elijah was getting ready to go to heaven and he goes and visits the different Bible schools that he's speaking into. And they all would come up to Elijah and say, don't you know that your master is going to be taken from you? See, they know it. And he said, I know it. Shut up. Just because you know it doesn't mean you should say it. You have to look to the one who helped you to know it as to what he wants you to do with it. Amen. But Dad Hagen said he knew 90% of their, those in the healing line, he knew their condition and how they got that way. That's a whole heap of knowing. Amen. Now, you'll remember... <clears throat> Hopefully, Dad Hagen told about the time he was staying with the pastor. And uh, to make a long story short, he heard the pastor's wife crying at home. Yeah. And he said to his wife, go in and see what she's crying about. It sounds like almost the death of somebody, the way she was sobbing. And so the sister, uh, Mom Hagen went in and talked to her, then came back and said, well, no one has died, but said their granddaughter had been visiting the other grandparents and they put her on a bus to come back home. And when these, uh, these pastors who were the grandparents went to meet the bus, she's not on it. So there, the, the grandmother's afraid, which is the pastor's wife. She's afraid, of course, something really tragic has happened to the granddaughter and she's crying. So they go to church and they're in the back office and so he's getting ready for the service and sh the, here's the pastor's wife just weeping uncontrollably. He said, it'd break your heart to listen to how she's crying. And he said, I said to her, honey, honey, don't cry. She's all right. She's all right. And uh, he w he, she said to him, well, Brother Hagen, did God tell you that? He, he said, no, no, but I know she's all right because I go as much by what God doesn't say as by what he does say. And if there would have been a tragedy like that, God would have told me. And since he didn't tell me, there's not a tragedy. You know what that is? Skill. That you can only gain through experience. And being around those who have had experience. So he said, no, but I know that something hasn't happened because God didn't say something had. And so he said, when I said, he said, then she goes back to crying because God didn't say it per se. And he said, then while she's crying, he said, all of a sudden I'm sitting there and right in front of my eyes, I see a scene play out, had a vision. He said, I saw her get on the wrong bus. And he said, I, I just stopped and said, sister, I just saw, I just saw, see the spirit of seeing. I just saw there nothing, nothing's happened to her. She got on the wrong bus and said, are you sure brother Hagen? He says, I'd stake my ministry on it. I just saw it. So, and of course, a few hours later, they got a phone call. She had been found. She had gotten on the wrong bus, but he said, people think I saw that because I'm a prophet. He said, I didn't see that because I'm a prophet. I'm, I saw that because I pray in the spirit. Amen. So that means the spirit of seeing is available to those who pray in the spirit. Amen. Amen. The spirit of seeing and knowing Amen. is available as we pray in the spirit. We're more sensitive to the knowledge the spirit is trying to share. Amen. 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 
So it's not about, I got to be in fivefold ministry. I've got to have a prophet's office. And this is where people get off. They think because someone prophesies or because somebody has a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, they think they're a prophet. That's error. That's lack of knowledge. That's right. That's right. Paul said, I desire that you all prophesy, that you all would prophesy. He's not saying that you're a prophet just because you prophesy. Now, not everybody's a prophet. He's saying there are utterance gifts you can get into, revelation gifts you can get into if we hook our tongues up to the one who reveals. Amen. Amen. By, and we do that by speaking in other tongues. Amen. Amen. So we have a part to play in this. Now, and then I I won't go too terribly much longer because I don't want us to get into things that are going to keep us going that direction. But I will end with this. Dad Hagen prophesied that, or God spoke to him that he, that he would see uh, the spirit of seeing and knowing will be in manifestation in a greater measure than what you've ever seen before. Why is it that he's singled out these revelation gifts? Excuse me, yeah, these revelation gifts when people need miracles, they need healings. Why is he talking about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge? And Dad Hagen said the vocal gifts or the, the revelation gifts have to come into manifestation before the power gifts. And I was thinking about that and I thought why would that be and it dawned on me because God says something before he does something the power gifts are his doing the revelation gifts are his saying God spoke let there be light or light be and there was light God says then God does God says then God does so when God said to dad Hagen these uh, the spirit of seeing and knowing will be in greater manifestation. What does he want? We have to say some things. Amen. We have to say what we see. Amen. Say what we see Amen. so he can do what we say. Amen. 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 And if, they, the, if we don't see it and say it, he can't do it because God's divine order is he says, then he does. Yeah. He says, then he does. So and how does he say? Through us. Yeah. Through us. I remember uh, the account of Maria Woodworth Etter when she talked about she, I believe it was Denver, Colorado, she went to hold a, 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 a crusade in the convention center. And it held, you know, thousands of people, like 12,000 people. And she goes the first night and there's 18 people. She's 18 people. And she preached. And then she said, God is going to heal people of cancer. He's going to heal people of tuberculosis. Cripples are going to walk out of their wheelchairs. Blind people are going to see during this crusade. She starts saying these things. Within a few nights, the building is overflowing with people, and those things are happening. Why? Because she said it. How did she say it? Not trying to put pressure on God, but she no doubt saw it, knew it. And she said it, and then there was the prophet of it. Amen. The Holy Spirit manifested what she saw That's right. and what she said. That's why God is wanting to have the spirit of seeing and knowing operate so he can do more things among us. Amen. Amen. Well, are you helped tonight? Hallelujah. So we'll stop there. And if the Holy Ghost allows us, we'll go that direction. And we'll go further with it tomorrow night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I'm hungry for these things. Hungry for these things. Hunger is something you stir up on purpose. You have to, on purpose, decide to be hungry. Amen. And as ministers, we need to be teaching along this line because this isn't something that is being taught a lot. And it's not being, it's not something that's being heard. And so therefore there's no, there's no experience with it. And God needs somebody who's going to, he needs us to teach it, to sow it so we can reap it. 
He needs us to become skillful with it and gain experience because there's so many people that need the profit of the manifestations of the Spirit. Amen. Stand with me to your feet tonight. Father, we're hungry. We are hungry. And we thank you for divine help in these things. And we say, Father, we're reaching by faith. We purpose to move with your plan. Holy Spirit, we're hungry for the ways you manifest yourself. We honor and we value the ways you manifest yourself. And we say we welcome your manifestations. We are so appreciative of your movement. There is a prophet that comes from your manifestations that can come no other way. And we recognize that. We honor it. Let's just thank him. Let's just raise up our hands and worship the Lord tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you glory and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, how about we be part of the fulfillment of what God said to Dad Hagen? How about we be part of that fulfillment? Amen. Because if we look in some directions, it doesn't look like that's happened or happening. But uh, anybody who will have faith for it and say, we take it. We take it. We take it. Amen. I'm taking it. Taking the knowledge. Taking the skill. Taking the faith. Taking the renewed mind for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Holy Spirit. These are ways you manifested in times of old. We read about them in the Word. These are ways you manifested through Jesus' ministry. To fulfill what he was born for, he needed the manifestations you give. We need them. We welcome them. We honor them. And we thank you for them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hand me the microphone if you would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Noel, just come up and obey God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Oh, glory. Oh, my. Oh, my. Praise the Lord. Uh, your will. Oh, my. Yes, the, the, the time has come to the, for his will. <laughs> the will. <laughs> it's God's will. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the glory shall be on this Peter. Oh, and the glory will be here. You will see the glory. It'll begin from your spirit. And as you speak, what you see in the spirit, aha, yeah, God will manifest. And the glory shall be on those apokusha. And it will begin from the ministers. It will begin from the ministers and it will fall in the congregation. And the glory shall in the kush like it the gate the time is the coast day and the time is now for the glory to flow and the glory shall eke on the stokoto always remember the glory ha ha to kosto Christ in you the hope of glory and the gifts of the spirit will be in operation in greater way in a greater measure and that's inga okay to coast the gate kotosh the gate and that time the time and the soaking and the time oh my Oh, oh yeah, um, and the time. Okay, it at that time. I told ya, what then? You see it. Okay, I'm tia okochite at the shotom. I'm the sky mikai pihato koshtia. You'll see it in your spirit. You'll see it. Oh my, it does to us up right now. The spirit of singing knowing at Kadeshkaya is being imparted to everyone's spirit if you receive it. I say we receive it. I can to shkon, we receive it. I can am the koshtoya. He's imparting to our spirit. I can dushke at bokushte. Ah, he's 
imparting to everyone's spirit. Ha 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 ha. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It begins from every minister. It begins from everyone. Ha ha. Ministers that are hungry for it. Yeah, the higher at the it begin. It begin. It'll flow in a greater way, in a greater measure. I coast it again to coast to get behind it, and the circle time for who can ish lakianto and prank on them bros to get post to get behind the game. I pay. I pay. I pay. I do. I pay. I go. I bash. I die. I'm no. I must say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I do so. I ya to ko ambo sha kam do ko sto ya. Pastor Jay, I ko sto the miracles that you saw. It begins. It begins by pre the spirit of seeing and knowing. It will be a greater measure, and you'll see it. And they ko sto ya. And that time it cost the kai. It to cost the king compai. It to ska to ka to ya. And trust the kia to kostoya to them, to them, to them, yeah, to get to ya. And the ghost the cast to call pakato to. See, I'm seeing it. I'm just doing what I'm seeing in my spirit. A ghost the grass to come maste ya. Mati kato kutam ti kapo kosto kato kato kutam pe ya kato te kipi ka. A ghost ke te mam te kipo to ya. A ghost ke pakato to te ne pa ya ka. And the second time, the spirit of singing knowing. Ah, the spirit of singing knowing. I get to kusti can to kusti kapai. The pisto y can to kapostoya. And to kustoya. Namti, yes, Lord. Yes, to kusti. And to kustonti kaprantem kumprantem plagio pratokus prayer. Prekam to prestaka pretele. Pretela pressure. A pokustaya. A to kusto. Yes, so to take a cop. Now you'll see it. You'll see it come to pass. You'll see it. You'll see. It. You'll see it. Lord, you. You'll see it. You'll see it. Atukusta, na sto kusta. Atukusta, atukusta, akusta kusta. Atukus, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. Atukusta, atukus, atukusta, 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 atukusta. It's going to be a greater measure of these gifts of the Spirit to operate in this place. To, oh God, 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 oh God. It's a ghost of the chase. This is the chase. This is the chase. This is the chase. This is the chase. At the at 
there, there will be no chase without the Holy Ghost. But there will be no chase without the gifts of the Spirit. It, 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 this is the chase. This is the chase. This is the chase. The passive prophesied by the Spirit. The chase is the chase. And now is the time. Now it, this is, oh my Lord, my Lord, this is the one. This is the word. This is the word. I got to study. This is the word. Pastor, this is the word he gave to you. Ha, ha, ha. In that airplane, this is the, oh my God, my God, hallelujah. It took us to, it took us to, my God, Lord, it took my good Lord, it goes to Christ in a hunger shop. was hurt by you, Father. Oh, hunger, our hunger, our hunger. Oh, from our spiritual Father, from our spiritual parents. The hunger got into our spirit. It is time for that manifestation. It is time for the harvest of the hunger that they have. Now that hunger is in us now, and the glory shall get the bros. Take him out there. It's about the, your glory. It's about your will for the gift to offer it. It's about for all of us to profit, to profit, that we may know what's ahead. We may know what's ahead. We may know what's ahead. <laughs> and the miracles will flow to see and know and to manifest the one that we're seeing and know. And the glory shall cut up. And the glory now, ha, mm, yeah, ha, 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 only you give in the message to pastor, the past. That pastor, the message needs to be imparted. Let the message tonight be imparted to our spirit. And yes, I'm hearing you, Lord. Let pastor, let pastor do the manifestation. What the message that she has given by the Spirit to us tonight. It will be imparted to ministers. Ministers, even tonight in this place. Yeah. Amen. Pastor. That's all I have. Praise the yeah. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and worship him. We thank you for that, Father. Shh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Father. We worship you. Mashtakaye. Mashtakaye. I want to again read what God said to me about 2019. It's a new day. A new day of stepping into places in the Spirit. Can I say this? We don't step in without the Spirit's accompaniment into that place. Meaning this, you can't just step in and step out at will. I mean... You have to have the Spirit's accompaniment into things. 
Haven't you at times said, I need to get into, I need to get into a certain thing. And you endeavor and you endeavor. And you don't step in until the Spirit takes you in. See, that's how those who operate with evil spirits operate. They go in and, in and out without the Holy Ghost and they go, go into wrong places. But we don't go without the Holy Ghost. He's our guide. Amen. And uh, it's a new day. It's now time that he accompanies us, brings us into. Listen to this. A new day of stepping in to places in the spirit. And because we step into those places, it will bring us into a greater flow. See, we've been longing for a greater flow, but there has to be the stepping into and the Holy Spirit is the one that ushers us into that. A fresh momentum that hits a stride, hitting a stride in the spirit realm, in healing, in the gifts of healing, ministers making strides in the gifts of the spirit. More skill and more operation of them. Amen. Amen. So I believe God said to me a few days ago that this week of meetings, there will be, uh, it will come away, there will be a complete change for us. I'm not just talking about natural, in the spirit realm. We change, I believe, stepping into a place in the spirit. Amen. Amen. What he's talking about. In, uh, that is contained in this new day. <sighs> Amen. All we can do is set ourselves ready and be available, but he's the one that takes us in. And... Amen. We're going. I said, we're going. This which God said to Dad Hagen, we're go we, we purpose to set ourselves in position to move with that. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Ha. We give you glory. Change for us. Change, change, change for us. Change for our churches. Change for our ministries. Change for us in all the arenas of life. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you. We're hungry. We're hungry. And we're interested. We're interested to grow in skill and knowledge. And we thank you that by your word, you help us renew our mind to these things. Renew our mind to the things of the Spirit. Renew our mind to the spirit realm. Renew our mind to the operations and manifestations of the spirit. So that we move with them instead of resist them. Ah, we thank you for it, Father. Mashtakarai, just lift up your hands and worship him. Just worship him in the spirit. Mashtakariyada boshtukuriya da basanda. Moria the Makaya the Bostoria the Bashtiki Kikia the Bostokoria the Bestinkikia the Bostokoria Manjagaria the Bosoria the Bashaka the Pacaria the Bostokoria the Bashtiki Kikia the Bostoria the Bashtiki Manjaria the Bostokoria the Pashakaria the Bastakaria the Pashtiki Kikia. Mashta karya da beshti kiki kia da bostoria na mancha karya da basta karya da bosto karya da beshti kiki kia. Hanja karya da poto karya da basta karya da pasta karya da bosto karya shti kiki kia. Mashta kaya. God says in His Word that He will show us things to come, and I remember years and years ago. God spoke to me and said, the more you take time to speak in other tongues, the more my spirit will show you things to come. These are connected. To be filled with the spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues is one of the greatest privileges of the body of Christ, but yet one of the most neglected privileges. 
but not anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. It seems to me somebody has something. I don't know whether it's a song or something. But if you have a song or something, I don't know if Mr. Gene or Brother Joel, go ahead. Hallelujah. Operations, demonstrations of the Spirit of God. Manifestations of His glory have come unto us. And the power will flow and the glory shall fall and those who go with him will be changed one and all from the moving and the flowing of God so we're stepping in we're stepping out <laughs> in this new day. We'll sing and shout because <laughs> the glory fills the room and the power flowing strong. The saints of God are taking their place. And it won't be long We're stepping in As we're stepping out We're moving with the Spirit We'll sing and praise and shout We're stepping in To a greater flow and every place he leads us will go singing now we're stepping in we're stepping out because we're moving with the spirit we'll sing and praise and shout we're moving on going to a greater flow Everywhere he leads us, we'll go, we'll go, cause we're stepping in, we're stepping out, we're moving with the Spirit, we'll sing, we'll praise, we'll shout, we're moving on, but to a greater flow. And everywhere he leads us, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go, we're stepping, we're stepping in, we're stepping out. We're moving with the Spirit, and we'll sing, we'll praise, we'll shout, we're moving on. Up to a greater flow. Everywhere he leads us, we'll everywhere he leads us, we're stepping in, we're stepping out, yeah. We're moving with the spirit and we'll sing, we'll praise, we'll shout, moving on into a greater flow. Everywhere he we're stepping in, stepping out, and we're moving with the Spirit, and we'll sing, we'll praise, we'll shout, we're moving on into a greater flow, 
Everywhere he leads us we'll go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not just a confession, that's instruction and the direction and it's our it's our continual movement. Amen. Amen. How, we're stepping in. We're stepping out. We're moving with the Holy Spirit. We'll sing and dance and shout. Amen. Now we know what to do. I said, now we know what to do. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, thank you for being so patient with us and not, not moving on, leaving us out. <laughs> We're so thankful that you've been so, so patient with us. Thank you. We recognize. We recognize all the ways you've worked to bring us to this time and this hour and this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah.